Hi, in this video, I will give a project update on initial experimental OpenSVI run on my RV32 IMAC FPGA implementation. SBI stands for Supervisory Binary Interface. It is an interface layer between hardware and OS system that it can support various function calls through the interface. To first see if and how OpenSBI can run on my tiny FPGA system, I want to make as little change as possible on the OpenSBI source code and to make necessary updates on my RDL to make it run on my system. In order to do that, I first need to implement M and A extension of the RISC-V ISA. I also needed to hack some semi-hosting function for screen display, which I will explain later. In terms of boot sequence, or boot flow of this experiment, I'm still using my own tiny BIOS, hopefully to reduce some initial effort. And I also use the same SD card boot mechanism I had before, and place the OpenSBI binary on the SD card. On the final stage of the boot process, I used the firmware payload program from the OpenSBI that it prints a test payload running message in the very end. To start with OpenSBI, I have a couple of references here. I think the source code natively compiles with A and M extension in mind, so I also implemented these two extensions in the RTL. I took a shortcut on the multiplier function of the M extension that there are hardware multipliers built in in the FPGA, so I just used behavior expression on multiplication, and the FPGA compiler would map it to hardware multipliers. For division, even though behavioral RTO also compiled fine, but I got some problem that I wasn't sure if it's the synthesis or not, so I just changed the behavioral division to lone division RTL. A reference of the lone division is also given here. Among all these changes, I also changed the FPGA board from my tiny custom FPGA board to an off-the-shelf FPGA board, as it has bigger FPGA chip with more on-chip memories that I can use for debugging purpose. Here's a photo of the two FPGA boards. The one on the left is my custom FPGA board, and the one on the right is the off-the-shelf FPGA board. After we're done with some basic configuration with my tiny BIOS, before we can start OpenSBI, we need to set up a device tree called Flattened Device Tree, or FDT. A few references of device tree are given here. For this experiment, I have a very tiny device tree that only has three major components. A single core CPU, or heart, AC lint timer, and memory blocks. The tree specification is first compiled with device tree compiler on Linux into RISC-V assembly code. This assembly code becomes part of my BIOS, whose address will be passed to OpenSBI as arguments. As I don't have a serial device or other means for display, OpenSBI places a semi-hosting device as the default output device. I did some hacking to route the semi-hosting back to my own display routine I used before. This I will change later to have proper device specified in the device tree but now it's just for my own convenience. Here are a couple of references to ARM's website regarding semi-hosting. The original semi-hosting functions as a bridge between, say, a PC and a target system. In this experiment, I added some logic in the RISC-V core to route semi-hosting back to my own display routine as part of the BIOS software. Here's how this semi-hosting hack is done. As the flow takes the same mechanism as an existing trap, the implementation is relatively straightforward. So, after some implementation and debugging work, here's a sample output from the OpenSBI run. Not everything displayed is accurate, as I probably don't have everything set up properly yet. But this is at least a start, and a step forward to my project to bring up a system. Until my next update, thanks for watching.